Hey. Hey. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Hey, come on. <laughs> it's episode 68 of Alex and Jim. 68. And, yeah. Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. So we do. Uh, hey, last episode, we analyzed Through the Long Night. Yep. And uh, that's a good example of how Jim and Alex really like Billy Joel and are sometimes dicks to Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> I, man, nothing goes hand in hand with uh, Billy Joel's whole vibe. Yep. And kind of being a dick to him a little bit. <laughs> yep. Because we. He would be a dick to us. Yeah, and he'd be right. <laughs> You're right, mostly. <laughs> right, but he uh, he wrote this song, and we preemptively were like pretty sure it was terrible, and like before we thought about it. And then we listen to the song, and it's not terrible. It's eminently listenable. It's got its flaws. Yeah. And we we analyze the lyrics, and there are some interesting lyrics and some cliche lyrics to it. Hey, watch last episode. I'm not going to redo that. <laughs> but when I posted the video, I linked to, I found a storytelling show he was on. He was, I think it was like he was doing a talk at a university is what it looked like. Uh huh. And this woman in the crowd asked about this song through the long night. And hmm. she said, she wanted to know. And she said, to me, it sounded like the story of someone going through suicidal ideation or feelings of like they might commit suicide and you being there for them. And it's my favorite song. And that took me aback that a Billy Joel fan would say that about that song. Yeah. That's a weird song to be your favorite Billy Joel song. That is very weird. But that is a testament to the way music works and the way yeah. art, art works in a particular like that hit her. She didn't say it, but I'm like, yeah, I bet she was like went through a thing where she thought about it. I bet she did, or she went through a thing where uh, a different song was her favorite song for a long time, and then she changed her mind, and then she had a different favorite song, which I <laughs> have done with Billy Joel. I I do it now for sure. Still, yeah. Somebody asked me once but about never that. through the long night though. Yeah, that's not going to end up on your list. It's just no. not. But for her, I, that's why I got to imagine there's something personal. So then he told a story of how he wrote that song. And those are interesting stories. Always. And, uh, and it makes you like the song a little more because there is a story beyond, well, I had to write a song. <laughs> and he talked about Picasso in that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Billy Joel will oddly enough surprise you with knowing stuff every now and then. He talked about Picasso <laughs> and these particular paintings of this, of Picasso. I guess it's paintings of Picasso watching this woman sleep. Wow. But multiple pictures. And he said sometimes he would paint her like she's a bird or a frog or what he was trying to remember. And he goes... And then a very Billy Joel funny thing to go. He said, he says, they're not flattering pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was interesting because I was like, well, damn it. That's what it is to be such a fan. If you're a real fan, every now and then you'll realize, oh, I like this song. And it ain't one of his greats, but I like it. Yeah. Like, I like Ballad of Billy the Kid, but I know it ain't good. <laughs> no. And it is no, it will not help you on Jeopardy because it is not accurate. Yes, but I like it. And as I said at the time, it's a great state commercial, but it's just, I don't know, I just like it. <laughs> yeah, and, man. Yeah, it was just funny to hear and realize, well, our show is could be called Two Old Cranks Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. <laughs> yeah, who better? Yeah, Statler and Waldorf analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Three old cranks. <laughs> when one of them's Billy Joel. That's right. Three, two old cranks analyze an old crank. That's right. It was just very, very funny to me 
that uh and this woman of course was young and earnest yeah sure qualities i possess neither of those qualities anymore i feel like you are pretty earnest yeah that's nice yeah. to say yeah that's true okay well it's kind of you're very you're not very sly all right pretty I'll straightforward say. I'm a straight shooter is what I'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the deal, by the way. Straight shooters don't actually tell you they're straight shooters. Right. So when someone does, look yeah. out. Yeah, because it is one of the variations of, hey, can I say something rude to you without consequence? <laughs> right. I tell it like it is. I tell it like it is, which means I still like saying the N-word. Can I do that because I'm honest? <laughs> or any number of variations of, right. of hey, hey what's wrong with saying the truth about the jews man <laughs> well sir <laughs> yeah i was talking to this about a friend of mine i'm like with a friend of mine first of all dave Chappelle, Ugh. if if you're on nbc a preeminent network you can't say anyone stifling your free speech they just aren't no, especially when it's like your third time hosting the same show. And if you're making $60 million from Netflix, no one's stifling your free speech. They just aren't. They're just not. Yeah. They are criticizing you, which you're not exempt from. Right. That's you're... the thing with the straight talkers and the free speechers. Yeah. Don't want to be contradicted. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm I'm very sorry, but that's the other side of the free speech coin that you like so much. You are allowed with your free speech to ignore them. You're allowed to do. You could just do that. Yeah. Well, let, and a lot of a lot of comics do that. They're like they don't engage. So good. Like Bill Burr doesn't really engage that much unless he's got a joke about it. He's not relentlessly whining about his free yeah. speech. Right. He's He's, like, I say something, and eh, people don't like it, that's fine. Yeah. Great. That, as it should be. Yeah. But I'm like, eh, you know that thing where you reinforced uh, racist tropes against Jews within the confines of your jokes? Eh, that's still anti-Semitism. It just is. It is. Yep. Yeah. And also, yeah. can we stop deciding who... Who's suffering is the most? God damn it. Fucking tiring. Oh, a, yeah. I mean, there's probably cases to be made. Yeah. For whose people suffered yeah. the most. It's, but um, are you the rep? Yeah. No. Debatable. We can all just kind of go, all right, look, who are, I don't know who suffered the most. It wasn't the Swedes. Can we just we'll just say that it wasn't the Swedes. They didn't yeah. suffer the most. Yeah. yeah okay. And and That's the Swedes and the Swedes will go. You're right. We're fine. Doing pretty good. Our it's health, a little chilly, but otherwise great. Great health care, great life expectancy, and how too small to go to war with. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, so not us. Probably yep. someone else. Yeah. Yeah just irritates me because i'm like he's a good comic but then there's times when i'm like can't we all just be mad at the low quality of that particular premise i don't want to be mad at that sometimes instead of the other stuff also exhausting to have i don't know how what he did like 12 or 14 minutes at the very top 90 percent of it Perfectly fine, good jokes about other stuff that we can all agree on. Yeah. Make some cuts, man. Yeah. It's the uh it's a victim complex. Like yeah. I, I gotta say something controversial so people will be mad at me and then I can uh, be a victim. You don't have to be a victim, man. Yeah. Be actually being a victim of something is no good. Yeah. Why would you seek to pretend to be one? It's it's brand victimhood. That's what it is. It's brand victimhood. Oh, I'm a genius. That's actually good. It is brand victimhood, and it is on fire these days. Yeah, it's yeah. I, this is how I sell my tickets: is by complaining about how no one will let me sell tickets. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> no one will let me be president. You just were. Yeah. Uh, he did this because I announced my run. No, you knew this was coming. Yeah. Although him, he's not one to even have an opinion about. Like, oh, I can't believe he's doing. You can yeah. believe it. You can believe all of that. Yeah. No. None of that's surprising. It's the J- the Dave Chappelle thing is annoying only because he's not a terrible person. No. That's what like he's a person who could be talked to. That's what you get mad at that because it's there's value in finding that frustrating. <laughs> right. Right. There's hope. Yeah, there's like a person like that could learn. He probably won't because he's rich and will never meet me. But and and anyway, I'm nobody's solution anyway, but <laughs> uh i mean the thing is he won't he might learn he won't change because it's working it's yeah working. yeah he hosted i'm sure the ratings were great yep um relative to i don't know kiki palmer sure um yeah and he'll get more netflix specials and stuff written about him it works yeah. i thought of this example because it's a perfect example of the hypocrisy and lie of the whole thing bill maher who is a piece of garbage? <laughs> um, Thanks. He actually got canceled the one time <laughs> right. he questioned the U.S. military. And was the one time he made a legitimate point, they were <laughs> like, oh, you no, know, you can't do that. Right. And he lost the show. His career was over. Literally canceled. And he went back and said, all right, I'm kicking this cat out. Hold on. (laughs) I thought I heard something. Yeah. So it may be confusing because you heard a dog, but the cat was instigating the dog. Okay. So he got canceled for making a legitimate political point that was legitimately edgy to make. Yep. In that, a really bad environment for that kind of point. He took an actual comedic risk and he paid the price. But then he was like, I'll be a good boy now because I want to have a show. I I have no guns that I would ever actually stick to. So I'll <laughs> I'll do the things you want. So he became the kind of liberal that people like, which is a liberal in theory. Right. But who's really a libertarian, really? And right. who probably isn't really that, because I don't believe he holds any actual values. I don't think he has real values. It seems like he doesn't. It yeah. seems like he doesn't. And yeah. or he is so entrenched in some kind of weird bubble yeah. of uh, you know people telling him he's right or smart or something. Yeah. yeah. That, um, any belief that comes to his mind is validated. Yeah. And he... Uh, and he finds himself very funny. He does. He does. But and here's the thing: he got canceled for that. Yeah. Since then, on the new show, he's been canceled so many times, meaning renewed and got more money. Right. Like said the n-word. He still has his TV show. Yep. Uh, he's transphobic. Yeah. I'm never surprised that an old white guy's transphobic. That's fine. I get it. No, he's quite Islamophobic. Islamophobic. He as a, and I don't understand any atheist who's like, well, Islam Islam's worse. I'm like, well, no, all religions are bad conditionally. Yeah. In the way that they are practiced. And uh you're living in a country that has suffered far more violence from white Christians. Far yeah. more than 9-11. Way more. Way more. And constant and continuing. Yeah. I get that they didn't take down the two big buildings. And that's not trivial. I know it's not trivial because that was jarring and scarring. I get it. But it's more actual people. And I guess you're okay that most of them are minorities. So there you go. What, right. what, what, you know, you hit the center of white capitalism. Well, what did you expect us to do? <laughs> but he makes those. Uh, it's just so ridiculous. And, and also, he ain't funny anymore. No, no. You know, when it, uh, on the plus column, he's very good at running a panel. Yeah. 
which is uh, such a specific and difficult skill to master. Yeah. Uh, you know what? If I have to give it up for him, I'll be like, yeah. you're good at running a panel, playing devil's advocate in a panel situation. Great. Yeah. Uh, playing devil's advocate in jokes doesn't work. Yeah. That's not the job. Yeah. Plus, the thing is, though, he might be good at panel, but he will both sideisms all the time that oh. is not healthy. Nope. It isn't actually healthy for discourse to say, well, look, yes, they were there with tiki torches saying Jews will not replace us, but also liberals like avocados. So they're both bad. Right. So what's a boy to do? Yeah. How do you how do you choose between these two? Obviously, same things. <laughs> <laughs> you must become a libertarian. Yeah. Where you only like hookers and weed, yeah, conservative politics, <laughs> yeah. I think the one nice, I think being a libertarian is good in one sense, which is you don't have to bother knowing anything. That's kind of nice, it's great. You just get to have strong opinions that don't track to the real world. That's the liberty part, you are freed from considering <laughs> anything, yeah, any truths. I, man, it, libertarians would shit themselves if they ever won a major role in government because then they'd have to oh, go oh no is there a book around that says how this works <laughs> is this, uh, a, this thing that i don't like yeah <laughs> yeah how do i make it work yeah <laughs> now i have to oh wow oh things are collapsing oh roads don't just happen <laughs> right yeah. everyone, everyone should build their own roads <laughs> <laughs> yep and they will the market will drop. No, yeah, so dumb. Yeah. All right, so that's how. Anyway, great episode. <laughs> <laughs> Two old cranks. Uh, so the 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 song you picked was a minor variation yeah. from River of Dreams, uh, album you don't like. <laughs> An album I largely don't like. I don't like the album art. And I don't like that damn River of Dreams song. Yeah, which which he plays in concert a lot, doesn't he? He does, because a lot of people do like it. Oh, and yeah. Kind of awesome. Yeah. As, you know, as we say in Billy Joel world, there is one for everybody. Yeah. Um, a lot yeah. of the youngs, the youngs like it because I think their parents played it for them when they were tiny children. Yeah. Because it does seem like a song you would play for a toddler. You would do a little dance. Yeah. <laughs> They still have positive associations with it. Yeah. But the rest of the album is weird and interesting. And I will confess, I just pulled this title at random because we we running low on songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a weird title. And I didn't really remember what the song was. And then I listened to it. And I was like, oh, it really would go on literally any one of his albums yep pretty seamlessly good old-fashioned like i'm gonna do some r&b mm -hmm. um and it remind me, reminded me of robert palmer oh okay, yeah so listen to it again it's uh i don't know exactly why it's like a less like you pull the 80s out of it a little bit <laughs> and yeah it's, uh, it's like a swinging Robert Palmer song. Before we get deep into it, you tell me what this drink is. Because I I will sometimes order an old Arnold Palmer, which of course is iced tea and lemonade. Uh -huh. If I ordered a Robert, Robert Palmer, what is that? That's it. It's iced tea, lemonade, and hair gel. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm going to send this back. I thought I'd enjoy it more. <laughs> <laughs> Too viscous. It's, yes, that's <laughs> too uh, viscous for a hot sunny day. <laughs> or of a winter drink. Yeah, that's, oh yeah, in the winter you will have it warm. Serve it warm. It's really good. Warm. <laughs> uh so there's a couple things I thought about immediately, which is this is a good example of a song where I don't like the fade out. Oh yeah. And this has the fade out. And the reason I don't like it is because you decided to make a blues song, a blues R&B kind of song, 
Well, those songs don't fade out. If you, if you were adhering to the genre, they close. They, they they're close. they're wrapped yeah. up. Interesting, cool music. You know, usually the musicians get a little yeah spotlight to wrap it up nicely. Yeah, and it and it felt to me like listening to it, I was like, it almost feels like he was on the verge of figuring out an ending and just stop because he does a. Whoop! At the end, he does that to say, hey, I'm blues. I'm blues today. <laughs> and and uh, and maybe it was a thing we've we speculated before where the engineer went, hey, let's just bait that out. Because <laughs> when he's doing the, the yell and whatever. But it's even he's at a better age to do the yell because his voice has gotten gravelly by this point. He's a little older. Mm -hmm. So it works. So I'm like, you should have written an ending. So there needed to be the fade out doesn't work for me. And I, I think I'm right about that. It doesn't ruin the song, but I think I'm right about it. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Unless he was really going for Robert Palmer and did like, oh, I'm going to make it fade out like a radio hit. Oh, yeah. I and, doubt that. Yeah, I don't think so. And man, that's an unreasonable amount of yeah, you optimism feel back that many layers well it's unreasonable to imagine this song was going to be a radio hit so that's oh, yeah. that right away as i figured out level. yeah it had blues yelling lots of trumpet uh-huh great lots of trumpet which i don't mind which actually might have also contributed to the robert palmer feel oh maybe yeah i think i get that because that's what because in an R and B song, is there that much trumpet really? A proper R and B song? Sax? Yeah. Yes. So I didn't certainly didn't hate the song. Um, it's perfectly fine. I listened to it more than I usually do. I did some homework, I guess. I listened to it a few times trying to figure out what the hell do I think about this? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, I found that I would try to listen to the words and then I just couldn't. And I was like, oh, I'm just enjoying the music. Well, that's a good thing, right? Like, wait, whoa, whoa what is he talking about? Yeah. But it turns out in a lot of those blues songs, it doesn't much matter. Yeah. You're just the, enjoying the music. To me, the best blues slash R&B songs are just when the lyrics are about visiting a lady downtown. Yeah. It's like those songs where someone's going to some lady's house and she's nice to him. <laughs> Yeah. Or, you know, I found uh, I used I really liked blues in like college era. And I bought a blues album and then I bought a second blues album, which I realized is completely unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> you only need one. Yeah. Oh, by the way, apropos of nothing, I was thinking about the fact that my exposure to Billy Joel started with the chipmunks, you know, chipmunk punk. You know, uh, you may be right. And then sure. it occurred to me that in the in the Chipmunks uh, story, they're a big band, you know, like they're huge. Oh, right. They have all these fans. And it dawned on me that the part that makes the least sense is no cover band is ever that popular. They don't do any of their own songs. <laughs> Did their like groupies have a name? <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god! And there's like adult yeah. women who remember when they had sex with a chipmunk. <laughs> All kinds of Netflix documentaries. Yeah, I I was the one girl who had sex with Theodore, <laughs> and they just immediately got married. Yeah, that's right. He met, he's the guy who did that the first groupie. He fucked. <laughs> So, of course, because it's Theodore, he was the sure. bassist. I think Theodore, Theodore was the reason the drummer. You know, you're in over my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know there's one named Alvin, and I only know because he gets yelled at in that one song. Yeah, it's Alvin, Theodore, and uh, Satchmo. <laughs> uh, no ladies. Yeah, there's no ladies in that group. No. There are, yeah. although the Chipettes eventually formed and they did that. There's a word for it in when you 
make a character a woman who's always been what's there's a word where you instead of creating an original character it's i think it maybe it's called putting a bow on it because it started with miss pac-man <laughs> oh maybe i like that yeah because it was just like how is she a lady just because she's wearing a bow All and, right. a bow. Yeah. and a mole she's got a mole that's right <laughs> and uh and uh, she's sexy, I guess, which I always found troubling that people are like trying to say that. And she would like, if she was on a date, she'd only eat like one ghost. <laughs> and want to look like a pig. Yeah. And then she Strap keeps up these other ghosts. Can I take she, these home? She keeps picking at the ghost you ordered. You're like, just. Why ordered. did you just get Pinky? Yeah. I ordered Pinky because that's what I wanted. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Got Inky. Why don't you have Inky? But she's easy, so you come out with her again. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's the bow. Tough. It's the draw of the bow. The bow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it had blues, yelling, lots of trumpet, and fade out is what I wrote down. A lot <laughs> of yell, a lot of yelling in this song. A minor variation. And it wasn't as cliche in the lyrics. We'll get into that. But it wasn't as cliche in the lyrics of constant references to music stuff that I was anticipating. Right. No, just the one. Just That's, the title, I guess. That was a nice the, surprise, actually. Yeah, it was. It wasn't like, oh, she's real sharp. And I'm yeah. This. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she doesn't play in my key or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, blessedly. Yeah. Although, if we know Billy Joel, first draft was probably a lot of that. Yeah, I'm sure. And somebody had to talk him down. There are times when I'm like, I think it's optimistic and mad to imagine there's a second draft on some songs. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would love to know. Oh, the other thing I, uh, through the long night, part of what he said to the woman who liked the song he goes are you irish and she goes no and he goes because it's very irish and that made me laugh because i'm like it's not irish just because you said the word irish in it <laughs> i think we talked about that so i'm like yeah it's like that's very funny to me because i'm like oh no that song is wicked irish because you know how irish people will constantly say i'm irish <laughs> <laughs> they'll imply it real heavily oh they yeah don't usually just say it they usually yeah. don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> if there's also great that he wrote an Irish song inspired by Picasso. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, by the way, I'm looking right at the album art right now that you hate, and I'm like, yeah, there's a lot going on in this damn album art. <laughs> that's... Uh... Although, here's something that maybe is charming about it that just dawned on me looking at it, which is like, some of what's here looks like it's from other songs of his. Mm -hmm. Like, one of it, I'm like, is that Allentown over there? And is oh, that the maybe. Downeaster Alexa out there? Oh, that yes, gotta be. And then... Wow, those people are just having sex in the woods. Uh, good for them. That's Adam and Eve, but so... I don't, <laughs> I don't remember the volcano song. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I picked next week for next week is the volcano <laughs> the song. Volcano song. <laughs> <laughs> well, get ready. Uh, it's, yeah, but I get why you dislike it. It's funny because it, I wonder if for this album he was trying to do a Prince thing just for the cover. Oh, because this was definitely the era of Prince having album art that was just too much. <laughs> it was too too many things. <laughs> Although, well, you know, when when we were of like record buying age, I feel like I always appreciated when there was a lot of shit on the album covers. Yeah. Look at. Because um, you put the record on, you're like, if read the lyrics once yeah. through. And then you kind of look and be like, oh, there are secret messages and stuff. Yeah. Be, and you know about all that. I oh, think, sure. funny that, you know, Christy Brinkley obviously painted this album cover. D did she? I didn't know she that. Did. She did. Oh, and that should have been the trivia question. Um, yeah. I think it's funny. <laughs> obviously, he's asleep and dreaming. 
Yeah. But also probably couldn't do, she probably tried to paint him with his eyes open and couldn't get them to look the same as each other. <laughs> We've all done that. It's like, yeah. oh, this is a drawing. Where are the hands? Why are her hands behind her back? Oh, I can't draw hands. <laughs> yep. Right. And it dawns on me now that I'm like looking at it, I'm like, should his head be above the water? But no, I guess his head is in the water. It's in the river of dreams. We're trying to figure out what, but also his head's bigger than that. Some of it is moored in the beach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the river of dreams flowing through his head. Yeah. But at the very top, of it, it's, it's the, it's the rocks of the beach crammed into the top of his cranium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I'm. You're not wrong, but it just dawned on me that if that's Allentown, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'd like that. And if that's the Down Easter Alexa, that's cool. It that's breaks cool. down a little bit if the other ones are like references to nothing. Yeah, Adam and Eve. Yeah, <laughs> a volcano, and Is then it? it's too small for me to even see what's going on in the other landmass. Yeah, there's nukes. Oh, wow. Yeah, going from China to somewhere? Huh. Because that's the Great Wall. Uh, okay. Which is a song on this album. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Let, man, I don't I don't know. I don't love it, but Never I don't know. But also you're you're fine, Christy Brinkley. You you didn't know his name for a long time, so you get a pass. <laughs> right. You gotta write on the album cover. All right. I think you started last time, so I'll start. Get it. Um, I they're broke. By the way, nice shape of the lyrics already. <laughs> <laughs> good, yes, good lyrical shape. Some days I have to give right into the blues, despite how I try to keep fighting. It's a sure shot I'm gonna lose, and I'll tell you why. You think I'm crazy? Wait a minute. <laughs> Some days I have to give right into the blues despite how I try to keep fighting. So right away he's like, hey, this is the blues song. Yep. Uh, that's that's a, if you're not sure how people are going to take it, you should say blues. Yep. Real that's early. A, so if somebody said, well, that's my favorite album. Oh, are you from New Orleans? Because it's a blues <laughs> song. That's <laughs> how oh, I try to keep fighting. A little sky comma there. It's mm -hmm. a sure shot I'm going to lose. That's a fine lyric. Despite how I keep fighting, it's a sure shot. That sort of defeatist opening sentiment yep. doesn't feel Start overly cliche. No. Nope. Just going right in. Yep. And I'll tell you why. You Okay, so I, I'm going to assume that from this moment on, he's telling me why. Why he gives right in. Yeah, it's sure, and I'll tell you why. You think I'm crazy. It's such a sad composition. No, no, there's a part of the music thing. Yeah. But can you blame me for what's been causing my bad disposition? Do you like that rhyme? Composition. I don't mind it. I don't either. It's it's such a sad composition, but can you blame me? For what's been causing my bad disposition. Yes, I can blame you, but it's a good lyric. I can blame you. Right, because I don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't really said anything. Ain't nothing new with my blue situation. Good, that's a good self-aware thing to say. Yeah, I'm kind of a mope a lot of times. Uh-huh. And nothing's fine. It's just a minor variation. I do like what we're using minor variation for yeah it's just a it's just a slight change from the everyday nonsense yep i like that it's just a blip it's just a yeah a minor variation from the depression i always have yeah and it's not new enough to be interesting it's not new enough and it's you know, there's the sadness itself, and then there's the just weight of, oh, this again. 
I like the uh, phrase, nothing's fine. I do too. <laughs> Ain't nothing new with my situation and nothing's fine. <laughs> it's just a minor variation. Yeah. It's fine that it's nothing. Oh, like that, it's interesting because I hear that phrase different and like it as well. So you're hearing nothing have nothing is fine. I'm hearing it as nothing's fine. <laughs> That's how I heard it. I'm hearing it as part of the previous line. Ain't nothing new with my blue situation, and nothing's fine. Oh, okay. In fact, nothing's new is fine. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Just okay. A variation. I feel like this song means. Most days I don't give right into the blues, but I eventually uh, have the blues. Yeah. And some days I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm not going to try. Yeah. And today's a fuck it. I'm not going to try, which is just a minor variation from the blues I always got. Yeah. It's a variation from trying a little. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a nice that's a nice lyric that's a nice start to this little song it's a a nice different take on having the blues yeah um a lot of the blues songs the blues are very intractable yeah unavoidable they take over your life there's nothing anybody can do and he's like well look most days and they're intense and they're intense and they're all in every part of your life <laughs> is blue yeah um i'm gonna look at this text from my mom speaking of the blues <laughs> aha well she got her hair done and i get a picture oh nice That's good nice. picture from mom is better than paragraph about how haircut happened <laughs> oh don't think i didn't get both <laughs> <laughs> ah she's on her fourth uh hair person of the month he said, well, the, the other one didn't know what she was doing, and that one was too expensive. And I'm like, you're, you live in a town of 40,000 people. You should stop burning bridges. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Man, my my uh, hairstylist now is perfect because she flirts with me. The dream. Yep. Now, see, I have a, a very nice Israeli guy. Flirty? Uh, he's, you know, he's charming. There you go. Um. But yeah, there is nobody flirting with me. Not in that room. Yeah. Well, time to find a new hairdresser. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I'm but you get a, a haircut point. you like, so there you go. Yeah. I'll let it go for a while, because now yeah. I'm old and uh, it's thin. Yep. So yeah. It's old, but it's thin. What? Uh. Yep. I have to, if I let it get too long, is oddly enough where I look like I'm losing the most hair. It draws attention to it. There's a sweet spot where it's just short enough that it could look like I did all of this on purpose. You're right. See, I have the thing where it's like, it looks tidier when it's short, but it looks darker when it's long. Um, uh, mm, yeah, yeah. What's the boy to do? Indeed. Uh, I'm sorry. I know we're off track. That's all right. That's all we do. I also like that the title is the last phrase in the verse. Yeah. It Rather just, than the first. Yeah. Presents itself very much as the theme and the title and yeah. the thesis all at once. Yes. If it's going to be in the song, it should, that's where it should be. Um, yeah. Don't mind. If the title's not in the song, that's artsy. Yeah. It's in the song in a weird place. <laughs> yeah. And beside the point. I don't, I don't like that. Yeah. And I don't necessarily love it when it's the title and it's relentlessly said in the song either. I don't necessarily, you know, where it's just mostly the song. Yeah. I also yeah. appreciate that the word blues isn't in the title. Yeah. It's yeah, that's... Been like the minor variation blues. And yeah, then, but, yeah, and boo, boo yeah. To, 
Uh, agreed. That all, yeah, that all is good. That makes sense. All right. No controversy. Great. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you're up. I'm up. When troubles want to find me, I ain't hard to find. They know where I am, like a hungry pack of wolves when it's feeding time. <laughs> they tear up a man. And it's a strange thing. Because now it don't really matter. All right, you're losing me. More of the same thing. Yeah. It's weird to have such a... So before, you got verse one where this is just a minor variation of a thing that always happens. And now it's very dramatic. We've got pack of wolves. we got a pack of wolves. Um, I do like the very first line. Um, it sounds to me, when troubles want to find me, I ain't hard to find. Yeah. Very much an action movie line. Yeah. Something a, a smoking Bruce Willis might say. That's right. Yeah. It. Uh, <laughs> again, we'll put it in our other script, but along with Bruno Mars, the spy movie. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's a cliche, but it's not a bad. I mean, blues is one of the best places to use a cliche anyway. Oh, yeah. Chock full. Because the blues is largely about human experiences that are cliche. Because I think one of the things you discover, what, the longer you live, the more you, do you discover that art can be cliche sometimes, but there ain't no nothing more cliche than actual experience. Oh, man. Life is not that clever. Nope. Doesn't got a lot of moves. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's like, I remember there's this baseball movie that had come out and was somebody, some movie reviewer was like, it's so cliche. And I was mad and amused. I was like, the movie's about exactly what happened. Yeah. It's cliche because human experience is in a fucking nonstop loop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's like uh, the Mets this year. The Mets had a the season of the century. They won so many games and then they immediately got destroyed in the playoffs. Because yeah. they're the Mets. Yeah. And it's like, yep, it's exactly what everyone expected. And it's exactly what happened. And yeah. every sports announcer was like, can you believe this? <laughs> yes. That's what happens. Can you believe they did the thing they always do? Gosh, yeah. You didn't see that coming. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hungry pack of wolves. When it's feeding time, are these zoo wolves? Yeah. Well, and it's a ah, trouble knows where to find me. Ain't hard to find. They know where I am. Hungry packs of wolves don't necessarily know where food is when it's feeding time. So. I guess because you're a bloody open wound and they could smell the blood because <laughs> otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense because wolves are wolves are known for messing you up. Yeah. And I guess their smell sense of smell is pretty good, but it's that's not really what they're, they're not really known for. Like, man, they would man, if you can't get away from a wolf, that's not really what they're known for. I bet it is, you know, a very good blues predator <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know you couldn't do hyenas yeah true <laughs> it had to be like you know the blues is uh an american art form it had to be an american predator like a get rid of hungry pack of wild boars when it's feeding time uh there you go because that's pretty american and also they don't nobody said nobody talks about how violent they are those guys right. are dicks they're flying under the radar. Ooh, wild boars, they get a pass. I don't know why. I don't know why, because they're short? Yeah, that's probably what it is. If, hey, if anybody should be canceled, it's wild boars. Right. Thank you. Finally saying it. Yeah, I'm putting it out there. <laughs> they They've been away with it for too long. They uh, tear up a man. And the other thing that I don't necessarily love about the wolves thing, because it sort of implies... A wound you ain't recovering from. Ah. And that's not a minor variation. No. I'm not sure. 
Anyway. It's getting a little blurry in the middle. Here's what I don't like is these lines that don't quite mean anything like, and it's a strange thing because now it don't really matter. More of the same thing. Yeah. yeah I, just okay. lines. If this had meaning, <laughs> and it's a, that's, you know, no, not a given, but if it did, I could see it meaning... Man, things, brutal, bad things can happen. But at this point, so many have happened that whatever, it's the same thing. So I could right. see that, but I more think it's just a yeah, place filler, but yeah. But hey, it don't even hurt. It's been part of the pattern. Still in all, it's a small consolation. I just define it as a minor variation okay from what bro this, this doesn't sound like a variation yeah so i what, what it could be i'm so beat down that this case of the blues doesn't even affect me yeah so then is it a case of the blues or is it the your state of being? Yeah. Well, and I also think, and I just define it as a minor minor variation. Is I mollify myself by telling myself it's a minor variation, and it suggests that maybe it isn't. And that could be good. Not sure, but but I could see that as being good if it was a little more clear. Um, yeah. But it's hard to make it clear because in it's poetry, right? It's a song, and you can't add another lyric that just just to clarify, it actually really does suck. But I'm telling you, you can't do that. So you gotta no, hold no, no. you gotta stay in character. You gotta find the way to to deliver that message within, you know, within you know, within the tiny pack you've got. Yeah. Hmm. I don't hate it. I don't hate any of it. Yeah. I just want to know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what we mean is it because it's it very much maybe just about feelings. Yeah. And uh, here we go. We're getting into the chorus. Ain't no way to fight him, darling. Ain't no way around him, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so many sky comments. Ain't no way to take him, honey. Nowhere to hide, and believe me, I've tried to shake him. Actually, pretty good chorus. Actually, really good. I love the way that part is sung. Yeah. This, to me, to, is more informative than a lot of what's come before. Yeah, it's a, it isn't this resignation. Nowhere to hide, and believe me, I've tried to shake him. Right. This is like, I'm resigning. Uh, I give up, but I'm giving up because I tried. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, or your parents would say, well, how do you know you don't like liver if you've never tried it? Yeah. And then you would try it once and go, now, fuck off forever. With yeah. Liver. <laughs> because I tried it. And I know. Yeah. And he's by the way. To someone why he's not going to fight these. Yeah. And side note, you tried liver because you were told you had to try it. Yeah. Later on in your life, when you read about what the liver does, didn't you go, why did anyone want me to eat that? Yeah. The disgusting part of, of all of us. Right. And you know what? It hasn't come up since. Yeah. I've been to a thousand restaurants and they've never said, like, we have a couple of menu additions today, a fried liver. Yeah. With a whole lemon squirted on it. <laughs> nope. Never came up. My wife is one of the few people I've ever met who likes liver. But she don't like it so much that she seeks it out. It's just like, oh, they have that? Well, I guess I'll have that. Huh. Uh, if I she... Never, yeah. never seen it. Yeah, I think some women like it because it is very high in iron. And right. there might be a, a subconscious thing that you're connecting because... You know, women need more iron in their diet because of their cycles and stuff. So they may be noticing that in their body. 
Maybe, or they may have read an article or their mom read something in Red Book. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, make sure you eat liver. Yeah. Just the way we were told, like, make sure you drink a lot of whole milk. <laughs> yeah. Very good for you. Your bones will break otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. You're like glass. You don't. <laughs> and when do I stop? Oh, you'll know. It'll start hurting. That's when you stop drinking the milk, is when it yeah. hurts. When you have to lie down for three days after a glass of milk. Yeah. And you were like, why did I indulge in a glass of milk? Damn it. Because <laughs> I've done that as an adult. I haven't had milk in a long time. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's why. That's thicker than I remember. It's, uh, it's made for baby cows who need to gain 400 pounds in a year. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Ah. And, and for Huns who are looking for an advantage. Huh. Yeah, that was one of their one of their big advantages was they could digest milk. So Attila the Hun and his hordes could have an animal that was both a pack animal and they could milk it for food on the way. Right, okay. And then it was a weird, it, uh, there are, so I don't know, if you, people who say, yeah, that's why he won. Along with being just brutally effective, but <laughs> right, it, right. he had this amazing advantage because it meant he could travel long distances and get by on very little. Huh. Yeah. The, oh. So, the listen, Guns, you, Germs, and Steel is a fantastic book. What is? Uh, it's a book called Guns, Germs, and Steel. Oh, okay. With it. It's a uh, hundred stories along those lines about weird small advantages that different societies had throughout history oh right very cool that all have led to why the world is the way it is today that's fantastic i remember yeah. reading about the advantage this one society had can't remember who, who it was if it was the greeks or whoever who first had clear glass yeah the first people to have clear glass had a really leg up on everybody <laughs> yeah that's yeah, so a lot of things you never think about. It's really great. Yeah. Like uh, I don't know what country it was the nuke country. What who was for yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the country that had the nuke. The nuke. Uh all right. And nowhere to hide and believe me, I tried to shake him. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's the the, the point. All right. And all right, you're up. You get a whole chunk again. Is it me again? I think well, yeah, I the last one. It's you, bro. All right, I guess it is. Well, I did chorus, so yeah, I'll do this, and then you do chorus at the end. Okay. I'm getting to the point where I don't feel the pain, and I've had enough. I'm ready for the next time it hits me again. Man, that's very defeatist and pretty great in a way. It's, uh, argumentatively defeatist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which yep. feels very Billy Joel to me. Like I'm going to make the case for my hopelessness. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Come on. Because I've gotten tough, it doesn't phase me. And now I've made my decision. I may be crazy. He's speculated on being crazy in multiple songs, hasn't he? He really has. It's not as though I don't know that condition until I'm through with this blue situation. Mm. Don't like condition into situation. No. Pass me the wine. <laughs> like that i like that and that is one of the that's a phrase billy joel has said outside the confines of a song enough that it belongs oh, yeah. here inside the confines of a car <laughs> yes yep he said that to a passenger who went let's just wait till we get to the restaurant <laughs> two more exits come on bill <laughs> <laughs> oh wow until i'm through with this blue situation pass me the wine it's just a minor variation and then boy all kinds of fucking blues here because he is for sure gonna drown his sorrows yep. i like that he is doing a blues theme but with a distinctly billy joel variation because it's not you know, it's not cheap wine. It's not beer. He's, it's not some hard liquor. It's pass me the wine. That feels very authentic. Yes. 
to this particular kind of an alcoholic. This is the uh, look, I'll be fine. Not because I'll be fine, but yeah. because I've been shitty for so long that I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Now pass me the wine until I get through this. Yeah. Here's another thing I noticed that makes this very different from any blues song I can think of offhand. Um, most blues songs are all about why you have the blues. Uh, my woman done left me. I lost yeah. my job. Whatever the case may be. Yeah. There's no indication in this song that I can tell why he has the blues. Yeah. Which I think speaks nicely to his history of clinical depression. Yeah. And always a why. Yeah. Very often you just, you are the blues. Yeah, dude, that's good. It's who you are. It's not anything that's happening to you. Obviously his lady is still there because he keeps talking to her. Yep. And pushing her around. <laughs> making no. her in stuff so, hasn't lost the lady he's clearly very wealthy at this point it's inside him yeah. and so the discussion is not how i got these blues it's like how bad is it today yeah can i take it or not and i'm gonna say it's bad today but it really ultimately it's just a minor variation so in other words, it's always pretty bad. Yeah. The day's extra rough. So stop asking me questions. There isn't a reason. That's actually quite lovely as an observation because it really does speak to a unique thing this song offers, which is what you want, you know? Yeah. You want a song to offer, you know, at best, you want a song to offer a little something different than a song offered you before. That's Especially, all. I think if you're going to write a another blues song <laughs> into yeah. the universe, yeah. Um, what's your fresh take? Yeah, the blues is so cliche as far as the way it happens that even joke blues songs are cliche. Where you're like, yeah, people have made that joke about blues before. Yeah, that's how we all understand it. It's the same with country music. Is like when country music is cliche. Everybody knows the cliches to the point at which pointing it out is a cliche. Yeah, no. The cliches are what uh, it's for. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's where they live. <laughs> so, yeah. So you can go gang, 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 gang. And everybody goes, okay, I know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. We're sad about some stuff. Yeah, it is quite, you know, there are bumps in the lyrics, but the overall theme the what it is about it's not even about yeah you're right because it's less about what it's less about having the blues and more about what the blues are that's yeah. cool that is cool the degree of the blues <laughs> yeah 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 um, that, it was always uh in old blues songs it's very like you have the blues or you got over the blues because you got your woman back. Yeah. They, it was uh, not bipolar. What's the yeah. other thing? <laughs> it was, oh, uh, it was a duality. Man. It's just like a simple duality where you, yeah. you either have them or you don't. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the degree. Yeah. Binary. Frequency. Binary. Thank you. It was yeah. binary. Yeah. Um, this is about the degree and the persistence and the duration. Yeah. Not the cause. Yep. And maybe even a good recognition. I was talking to, I, talking to our friend, Graham L. What do you know, Graham? Um, yeah. And we we're talking about half the problem sometimes is just, we we're talking about anger and how anger is a secondary emotion a lot because underneath there's trauma or hurt or whatever. And right. the big problem is not the anger even though it feels like it is the big problem is being able to recognize a root cause and this is an acknowledgement that well whatever is going on this is just the way it is and that's pretty depressing in a good way in a good like yeah that belongs in a song that belongs in a song oh, for yeah. sure 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. You want to go? Um, no, I'm okay. sure I I'm sure I just got done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my chorus here. I think so. Your chorus and and yeah, because I did a chorus in the next one. So you do the next chorus in the finale. All right. Here, well, let's see. Where am I? Uh, I got lost. Ain't nobody's oh. business, baby. Ain't nobody's worry, darling. Ain't nobody's problem. No way to win when you've already been forgotten. Oh, that's pretty good. Awesome. It's really well done. That's now here's what's cool. Cause here, so what I do, by the way, is when you're doing your lyrics, I find it useful to turn away from the lyric page and uh. just and just hear you. Well, also because I want to actively engage with you i don't want to just have this thing be a thing where we read um i want to be present with my friend alex in listening to you the beginning of that sounds like we're heading to a cliche Uh or or like oh what are you saying but when you get already been forgotten oh that hurts that's good that's good and that may be the closest thing to a clue about the origin of these blues yeah and the resignation, the resignation comes from, man, I've had these problems and people have given up on me. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastically sad. That is great. <laughs> it's really ultimately end point sad. That's really good. I'm glad you picked this song because it's better than we knew. It's pretty good, <laughs> actually. I think so. Um. Ain't no no way to win. Yeah. Uh, when you've already been forgotten. Ugh. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if it's like, oh, he started to get depressed because everybody forgot about him. Or did everybody forget about him because he's been depressed for so long? Yeah. And there's definitely it kind of... And there's a screw you, I'm not reaching out. Yeah. There's definitely that. Ooh, that's definitely cool. that. The whole song has been a little bit of like, I'm not reaching out. I'm telling you, yeah. I'm very depressed. I'm more depressed today, but that's just a minor variation from my usual depression. Ain't nobody's business. <laughs> Don't worry about me. You ever been on the phone with a friend? Yeah. You ever been on a f- phone with a friend when they're depressed or whatever and you're reaching out? And they make it very clear that they're not going to participate in the reaching out because they're just mired in it. Yeah. And I can imagine that I, if I'm imagining the characters, I'm imagining exactly that. Somebody going, hey, what can we do? Nothing is what yeah. we can do. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I have been, I've more often I've been the nothing guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not about you doing anything. Uh, yeah. Letting some time go by. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can relate to the the character in this song who's like, look, man. Yeah. Stop worrying about me. I get it. Thank you. Very nice. I have to. A month has to go by. Yeah. That's what I need. And even if I do need to talk about it, because you say I do, I don't want to. Yeah. I feel like this is for you. Yeah. Oh, damn. That's pretty damn good. Ooh, all right. Good Whee! job, Billy Joel. That's great. That is great. And then there's just, and it's a strange thing because now it don't really matter. More of the same thing. Don't even hurt. It's a part of the pattern. Until I'm through with this blue situation, <laughs> pass me the wine. Pass me the wine also means shut up. It does. It's like, don't try to help me. Give me the wine and leave me alone. This is not for you to solve. This is for me to endure. Here is, here's one of the things that's wonderful about these lyrics. You start reading the lyrics at the very beginning, and you're like, I don't know what this is about. He never expressly tells you what it's about. But at the end, I know exactly what it's about. That's really good. 
that's good writing yeah like oh the it was there all along yeah damn i did not expect to feel this way about these lyrics right i didn't either that's um, nice it's the key for me is that it is nothing about why he's blue yeah and that's fucking great it is and the man any of the things he could have told us he was blue about would be cliche or funny on accidentally and he's a smart enough guy to know that well first of all he actually had an agenda in his songwriting here he had a thing to say which you're right it's about clinical depression too it's yeah. about long-term systemic issues yeah that's it's not about addressing them nope it's Damn. about a, a little blip uh, we've all had friends who are you know depressed for years and then they have an extra bad month yeah and that if that's about, it's about the extra bad month yep they could be very fun to hang around with because you like them and they have a sense of humor but they're a little always a little dark right and then there's just a hell of a month yep wow 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 that's great good job billy joel yeah now i want to share something real quick yeah you see this oh, oh yeah yeah cut my face this week now you keep saying you cut your face, which makes me think initially I thought, oh, an animal got you. Nope. You're fucking around with a cat. Nope. That's so what... and right. now I didn't intentionally cut my face. So when I say I cut my face, it's more I'm saying my face got cut. Uh-huh. So uh this is for the for the viewers and the people who just listen. If you look just listen, you're not gonna see the picture of the cut, but so oh. imagine it's brutal. Um, but it was cut on my face and I would love for any listeners in the comment section, tell me how I cut my face. Oh, you tell me the story and, you know, obviously you're just going to be making it up and I'll tell you if you're anywhere close. Okay. That's pretty good. This one was just shaving. That's no good, but this sure. one was not shaving. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Ooh, boy, this is a memorable memorable part of my day yeah. wow okay and it's not that deep i don't think i'm going to get a scar but i would i will be honest with you now if this scarred i would not be disappointed this would be a great no, that's placement. a good that's good placement yeah this would make me so much more interesting than i am <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, okay i won't speculate here on the air so no. i don't want to i don't want to taint the jury pool yeah, and I because you're a uh, employee of right. the company. Not you're, eligible. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, not by the but the contest by the game show laws set up in the Senate, I believe. I do think it's yeah, funny yeah. that there are oh, game show sure. laws. Wish you fucking yeah. ruin everything. <laughs> uh, the, by the way, it's talking about weird laws. Uh, third month of November. Uh, what happens according to the French law? In the, in the third week of November, I presume. Third week. Third week. Sorry. Yeah. Third week. Uh, according to French law. Yeah. Wow. Um, I don't know. Is that when they review the language and cut words? <laughs> That's a good guess. It is the by French law and tradition when Beaujolais Nouveau is released. Oh, I should know that. I had a neighbor who um, would always get many, many. Uh, cases of it oh wow that's yeah. weird to be that big a fan of Beaujolais Nouveau it's not that great it is it's, fine. it's perfectly fine so for our fans at home who love it when Jim talks about wine for a second <laughs> um what's interesting about the wine I think it's funny that there's a law and it's very French to do that I think that's wonderful there what it is wrong. is it's uh Beaujolais Nouveau means new grape more or less is what it means right and it's a first harvest wine. And you know that a good wine, of course, is aged by this wine is meant to be made and drunk more or less immediately. It is what it is. Yeah. As a way of celebrating the harvest and that, you know, spring is coming. That's yeah. why. 
And it's it's like uh, fruit punch almost. Yep. And it is an absolute crapshoot. You know, any other wine, they do things to get a result. Right. This is where they go, well, this will be a wine. There you go. Good luck to you. Yeah. If you feel like trying it at home, do it quick. It actually does work really well with a turkey dinner. So oh. if you, I know a little bit about wine. It actually pairs really well with turkey because it's not too big. So lay, lay in a case. Yeah, get yourself a case. It's never very expensive. That might be the other reason your neighbor liked it because like a really good one is twelve ninety nine. Great. Because if you charged a lot for it, I think I'd want to fight you. <laughs> yeah. what, why, what, what are you doing? Because what you because you had grapes that makes it a nice wine. It's not good no, no. wine making. See, I love that. Also, every country in Europe, I think, has some version of uh, just a cheap ass dirt wine that's mm -hmm. actually pretty good. Yeah, because <laughs> it's it's a cultural thing. Well, we need to have a glass of wine with pizza, so we can't be opening up the. 100 year old Bordeaux. Oh, so if you go to Portugal, they have uh, this wine called Alvareño. Oh, I love get, Portugal wine. It's a uh, green, it's a green Ooh. wine. It's uh -oh. a, technically a white wine, but it has a little green tint because it's so brand new. And it almost tastes like champagne that went flat. Um, it's lovely. And everywhere you go, you can just say, like, you have green wine in the ha, <laughs> Yeah, here you go. That's fantastic. Glass. Great. I have had that. And you can get it here and you can't spend $10 a bottle. Yeah. Try. And it's really good. Yeah, it's if, uh, if you're new to wine or if you have, you're on a budget, get wine from any country that you know makes it okay, but isn't known for it. Yes. Because it does, the price doesn't get jacked up. Yep. If you get wine from Hungary, it's perfectly nice wine. It's under 10 bucks always. Yeah. Or around here, like upstate New York has a lot of vineyards. And they're perfectly they good, wine. but yeah. But yeah, nobody's like clamoring for Ithaca. Yeah. <laughs> Ithaca wines. California went through, oh, it's cheap because we don't, you don't know it's good. And then they commercialized and now they can charge it but just like a French wine. Yep, Australia did the same thing. It yeah. was cheap for a while, and then people were like, oh, the secret's out. Yeah. Uh, Aussie wine, only white as far as I'm concerned, and Shiraz. Not interested oh, oh. in their cabs or Merlots. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't think they do those grapes particular justice, but a Shiraz, they knock out of the park. The very smooth transition into our second podcast. <laughs> yeah. Alex and Jim. Analyze uh, Billy Joel lyrics while drunk. Uh, dude, I'm now not, now I ain't against doing that once. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> For the right song. We'll have to, when we have the perfect song. Yeah. Oh, Lord, that's pretty funny. Well, listen. <laughs> ah. And I will give you one hint right away. Okay. Uh, whatever the appropriate phrase is to describe this, just flip it. Just flip the phrase backwards is pretty much about right and you got the song huh do you recognize any of the hats i feel like it's uh they're very like queen elizabeth they're mm -hmm. uh queen queen hats hat they queen are. okay where are they at where are they located in a in a walk-in closet that's right they're in a closet i go, walk, I go walking through the, okay it's a river of dreams <laughs> i go walking in it no, no, it's a walk-in closet. It is a cl yeah. It's uh, let me find the lyric. Let me look at the lyric. <laughs> uh, okay, it's two words. It's two words from that song. Oh, it's so, two words. From River of Dreams. No, so let me give you a hint. Uh huh. Um, it's not walk-in. Who does who does that cl closet belong to? Queen Elizabeth. Right. So it's the. Queen's closet, your closet queen. Oh yeah, it's uh to just uh, Captain Jack. Captain Jack will get you high tonight. Yeah, <laughs> with your closet queens. Yeah. <laughs> is that now actually the Queen's closet? It is. Wow. It's it's one of the Queen's closets. 
Um, and it does it. Yeah, it looks weird. It looks low rent. It does. And that did, and I was like, that's weird, but it also doesn't surprise me because I'm sure it's a utilitarian place to keep things. Right. Because there's all of the parts of Buckingham Palace that are Buckingham Palace, or I'm wrong and the photos mislabeled. <laughs> entirely possible but yeah she probably isn't like rooting around in the closet herself yeah that's what i think and and i love the and i recognize quite a few of the hats that blue one i remember her wearing sure and all those damn parasols is that what they're called or umbrellas umbrella yeah umbrellas bumber shoot <laughs> the bumba shoot it's a nice it's nicely organized for being so damn full but it very much feels like a rich person's closet because how many people are like, well, I need an umbrella for this reason? For this like reason. a rich person's closet or a pretty well-off person's entryway. Yeah, absolutely. Just like by the front door. Just because they want you to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Really <laughs> 12 umbrellas. You're pretty fucking rich. Oh, somebody's got 12 umbrella money. <laughs> I guess you had $120 at one point. Yeah, I, I mean, I got six umbrellas, but I can never, I could never afford that many umbrellas. <laughs> I've got, here's my problem is I've got six umbrellas and they're all at my office. I bet that's true. <laughs> so, but the key is to have three at each place. But yeah. what inevitably happens is they all end up at one place or the other. Yep, because you took them and you were done with them. And it's impossible when it's nice out to think about an umbrella. Yeah. You can't have a thought. If you do, then you have a specific kind of OCD. That's the only way you do. Right. And yeah, yeah. you're the person who's like, where's your umbrella? I'll show you. It's in my umbrella case. That's the person. I never set it down. Yeah. Where do you keep the umbrella case? Well, I have the, you know umbrella wheelbarrow that i push around i don't want to carry it all the time because one time when i was six i got rained on and my mother yelled at me <laughs> and i never forgot and i have a series of ticks and twitches yeah <laughs> that's so great i had this uh, memory i had the memory of being a kid and not wanting to put things in my pocket this is what kind of kid i was which is i think technically the term for me as a kid was it was a dumb kid and uh, what I would do is I didn't like having things in my pocket because I wanted to hold them. I mm. liked holding the. So if my dad gave me $5 to go get candy or something, I would be so happy I had the $5. And so I'd go to the store with the $5 in my hand. Mind you, I did have pockets on my pants. And at some point I was distracted by a dog, I, a car, or you know, there was a horn. And I would look around and go, oh, no. My $5 is gone. Ah, <laughs> uh, the best. So what I learned to do is put them in my pocket and keep my hand in my pocket around it clenched. So I was That's... like, okay, now I'm doing both. Yeah, still on that. And why do people think Jim looks weird? Well, <laughs> he's got one hand in his pocket. Yep, and I don't know what he's grabbing. I hope it's $5. Yeah. <laughs> uh... All right. I have three possible questions. Oh, I like that. I'm going to go with the weird one. Um, up until 1980, every Billy Joel song that charted in the U.S. charted higher in a different country. What country? Interesting. Okay. Every year, up until 1980, what? Up until 1980, up until last August. You would chart, well, it makes sense to me as a people. So I'm going to say Canada. That's correct. And you know what? I'm right about the Canadians. They're, they love the working class stuff. They love soft rock. You know, soft rock, something with a little country twinge that mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff had. Uh, you like bare naked ladies? You like bare naked ladies? Canada. What's that? You like bare naked ladies? Sure. Uh, 
at when I was first a casual fan, I didn't know this. And then as a big fan, because I, I could do a show about them as well. I love the Bare Naked Ladies. But man, they've got some serious country influences. Oh, interesting. They do a version of one week in concert sometimes because that was a huge hit. They got to do it. You got to do the hit. But they like doing a variation of it. And they do a version that's a bluegrass with banjo. Great. And dude, they can play banjo the way it was meant to be played. They're not just guitar players who are like trying to play the banjo right they're not oh. playing it wrong they're playing the oh fuck they are so good live highly recommend do it do it for yourself sometime if you can because they're so funny and you'd love to how funny they are great there's this one yeah. song they do they, there's a sing-along part and they go and look at the person next to you if they're not singing along they're racist <laughs> great and says that uh, the best oh, yeah and they're smart they always tour with somebody who's also past their prime but popular with a certain group of people so they always sell out because they're like we know who we are yeah we know what's up so key. Right. now i'm not rushing to close but what i want to do is i want to go look at the discography to river of dreams i'm going to be honest about what i'm doing right now <laughs> uh the because i didn't pick a song but I thought it would be fun to pick one now uh, because you did River of Dreams. And I thought, well, let me look at it and do the same thing. Let me go. What is the River of Dreams? <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> Billy was River track list. Okay. Track list. I'm going to look at track list. Oh, you know what? We might as well do this because it. Uh, we mentioned, oh, real quick, by the way, the album cover, he also has a nautically themed um pendant and i wonder if that's a thing he actually wears in real life oh i'll bet i bet it um, is that it is or was yeah and i'm gonna pick this because we were like why is the great wall there well there's a song it's called the great wall of Tri china so in yeah. episode 69 we're gonna talk about the great wall of china and you know what would be amazing hmm. if we talked about this album and we suddenly realized oh other than that one song it's our favorite album now that would be really funny i don't see it happening but that would be really cool if that happened i don't see it happening i really don't if i'm being no, honest but it'd be cool that would be so neat if you're we like oh it turns out yeah. if you just ignore the biggest hit from the album biggest only yeah, uh, biggest for sure. Maybe. Did um, what else was well, that? that lullaby song? Did that chart? Oh, I think it did. Yeah, and that's a pretty song. And so it goes. And so that it one. goes. Yeah, that's a nice little song. Yeah, it's lovely. And that's an intentionally little song. I like that about that song. I like that it's a tiny song by design. It's just meant to be a little lovely thing for his daughter, who he turns out he's a decent dad. I'm so happy to know that. That's very sweet. Always bums me out. You're like, oh, you know, I really like Bill Murray. Oh, don't watch the news. No. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. That was a bad one. Yeah, it's a bummer. But all the signs were there. Oh, yeah. I watched uh, Stripes again recently. Uh, yeah. With Sue. And uh, we were noticing that he's just an awful person. The character yeah. is terrible. And it, <laughs> it's just an asshole. For no reason, irredeemable, doesn't learn a single thing. The military guy, I I I I like it when it turns out who you identify with in a movie changes because it's pretty funny because you're like, yeah. the military guy's right. You join the military, you idiot. Yeah, lives are at stake. Yep, you can't pull this shit. I'll give empathy to John Candy's character. Because he struggles with an eating disorder. He just wants to be liked. And they let him in. In real life, they wouldn't have let him in at that weight. That just That's wouldn't true. have happened. So true. they did something wrong. So that's yeah. their fault. But Bill Murray, no, you're... My friend, 
My friend Chad Jeffers joined the military. It was lovely. My friend Chad was a good, is a good dude. He's still with us. I just haven't seen him in many years. But uh, he always liked, he's a very funny dude, just quirky as all hell. Just about as he yeah. very, the best kind of Mormon, just very friendly and easygoing <laughs> and just laughs about a lot of things. He told the story when he was going through basic training, he's being yelled at by the sergeant because that's what they do. Mm-hmm. And he can't help but start laughing because he's remembering all these movies he's seen. <laughs> uh, great. And the sergeant goes, Robert Jeffers, the hell are you laughing at? And he goes, just happy to be in the army, sir. He goes, all right, give me 60 bushels. <laughs> and the way he tells it, he enjoyed the whole thing because he was just like, like I'm in the movies. Oh, my God. Great. <laughs> that guy, I've seen Chad. He's, you know, about my age. There's not a single year on his face because of who he is. Yeah. He's just that guy who's like, this all is the, great. All whatever it's, it is. Yeah. And he, I'm not going to share the bad stuff, but he's had things happen like you do. Oh, yeah. And on the other side of every single one of them, he's like, I'm Chad Jeffers. I'm okay with life. Yep. Mormonism is the only religion that I know is not true, but I've sometimes thought I could maybe still do it. <laughs> they seem very happy. When I was young, if I'd have been single, I probably would have. Because yeah. I'd like, oh, I could have an incredibly hot wife who's always nice to me. And <laughs> oh, if I was single, I'd do that. Sure. <laughs> it's true. I, everybody will every, we'll all have these little jokes and We'll all sit at the dinner table nice with each other. Oh, this is great. And I, you, she won't tell me to take out the trash. Yeah. All right. Pretty good. She's, pro- I, she's definitely going to be the kind of wife who sits on your lap while you listen to music and just cuddles. I the like best. that stuff. <laughs> um, religion. I don't deserve it, but I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh That is, by the way, the theme of our show. We don't deserve it. (laughs) What's better than getting something you don't deserve? Nothing. Oh, I tried. See, I didn't get it right.